Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at using the unit circle. By now, you should have seen the video on completing the unit circle or be familiar with completing a unit circle. Uh, what is a unit circle? A unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1 in the coordinate plane. So the coordinate plane would look like this, and it would have a center at the origin, and this would be the point 1, uh, this would be the point 0, 1, this would be the point 1, 0, this would be the point 0, negative 1, and over here we have negative 1, 0, and those would be four points on the unit circle. But of course it's a circle, so it has infinitely many points on it. Oh boy. We're going to pretend like that's a really good circle, because that is obviously terrible. But this would be an a, a unit circle. Okay, so we want to decide whether or not the point lies on the unit circle. How can we do that if we're given the uh, coordinates? Well, if we were to plot this point, negative 12 13 is going to be like here, and 5 13 would be maybe here. So it's, you know, it's going to be somewhere here. Maybe it's exactly on the unit circle. Maybe it's not. But we can use the point because if we were to look at this, we want to see what this value is. Well, we hope that it's 1. So is it 1? And then the legs would be comprised of one leg is that x value, and one leg is the y value. So what we're looking for to decide if a point lies on the unit circle is does x squared plus y squared equal 1 squared, which is just 1. If the answer is yes, then it does lie on the unit circle. If the answer is no, then it does not lie on the unit circle. So let's look at our first example. We have x, y. We want to see, does x squared, negative 12 over 13 squared, plus 5 over 13 squared, equal 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm just going to put a question mark. Well, negative 12 over 13 squared would be 144 over 169, and 5 over 13 squared would be 25 over 169. This would equal 169 over 169, which equals 1. So does this lie on the unit circle? Yes. Yes, it does, because it worked at Pythagorean theorem held, which only works for right triangles. Okay, our next example, we have the negative square root of 7 over 15 and the negative 2 radical 2 over 15. We want to know, does this lie on the unit circle? So does the negative square root of 7 over 15 quantity squared plus the negative 2 radical 2 over 15 squared equal 1 squared, which is 1? Well, this would end up being, so squaring a negative will turn it positive. This is going to be 7 over 225. This is going to be 2 squared 4, root 2 squared is 2, so 4 times 2 is 8 over 225. This equals 15 over 225. I don't even need to simplify it to see this does not equal 1. So does this lie on the unit circle? No, it does not. It's just some other random point. What else can we do with unit circles? Well, I can give you a, an angle measure, and I can say, okay, what point is associated with that? So it helps to, to have your unit circle handy. So if we're talking about the angle measure pi over 4, so that's given in radians, what point is associated with pi over 4 on the unit circle? Well, pi over 4, if we think about this, let me redraw my unit circle. And if you have one handy, you're going to want it at this point, because if you have it and it's complete, then you should already have the answer to this, and by the time I'm done, you should have already written it down. Pi over 4 is going to be right here. That's our 45 degree angle measure, and that's going to be associated with the point root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. The next one, when we're looking for 5 pi over 6, so 5 pi over 6, that's going to be over here, 5 pi over 6, and so this one's going to have a measure of, this one will be negative root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Lastly, we're looking for t is negative pi over 2. Okay, this one might not be on your unit circle, but we can talk about this. So here's 0. Remember, if it's a negative measure, that means we're going clockwise this way. Where would negative pi over 2 be? It's going to be down here, associated with 0, negative 1. So that's just another way we can use the unit circle, is we can give an angle measure and find the corresponding point with it. I can give you a point, and you can find the corresponding angle measure. So many different possibilities. In our next example, we're going to evaluate the six trigonometric functions of the real number t. So we, when we're looking at their six trigonometric functions, we need three things. We need to know the radius, which in this case we know the radius is 1, and then we would need to know x and y. Now because the radius is 1, when we look at sine or cosine, we're always going to have something over 1. The question is, what is that something? 
Well, if we're given an ordered pair, x, y, x corresponds to cosine and y corresponds to sine. And that's all we need to know. So as long as we know the point associated with this particular uh, angle measure, we can pretty much fill this table in very quickly. So 2 pi over 3, that is going to be associated with the ordered pair negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So that means since this is x and this is y, this is cosine and this is sine. So sine of t is going to be root 3 over 2. Cosine of t will be negative 1 half. Tangent of t, so that's going to be sine over cosine, that'll be negative square root of 3. Cosecant will be the reciprocal, but when we have the reciprocal, so it would start out as 2 over the square root of 3. However, we really shouldn't have a radical in the denominator. Um, we're supposed to rationalize the denominator, so we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, giving us 2 radical 3 over 3. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2. For cotangent, the recipro reciprocal of tangent, negative root 3, this would be negative 1 over root 3 which we would want to rationalize the denominator, we would get negative root 3 over 3. We want to verify that it makes sense that sine is positive in, uh, sine is positive while cosine and tangent are negative. 2 pi over 3, that's going to terminate up here in quadrant 2. That is where sine is positive and cosine and tangent are negative, right? Because cosine and tangent both look at the x value and the x value is negative. Last example, uh, this time we have t is equal to negative pi. So negative pi on the unit circle, it might help to see. So this would be negative pi over 2. Negative pi is going to be up over here. So negative pi corresponds to the ordered pair negative 1 comma 0. So we're talking about negative 1 comma 0. Remember this is x and this is y. x is cosine, y is sine. So we have sine of t is 0. Cosine of t is negative 1. Tangent of t is 0 over negative 1, which is 0. We're going to have some issues here when we take reciprocals because there is no reciprocal of 0, so this one is undefined. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1 itself, and the reciprocal of 0 is again undefined. So these have been a few different examples of ways that you can use the unit circle to help evaluate various angle measures or see if there's a point that's on the unit circle or not.